God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean. White with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Job Shop USA. My name is Keith, and this is my job shop. We're in the fabrication section tonight, and we are setting up our oven for shielding gas. Now, we've done some heat treating. We've used our hot shot oven in the other room about a year and a half ago. Uh, we were doing some bushings and things like that. We also have some other interests for our ovens and we want some shielded gas applications. And we were in communication with Stan at uh, Bar Z Industrial and um, uh, he helped us out with a kit to install uh, a, a way to get inert or shielding gas into the oven to shield your parts like our spline that we're going to be heat treating to minimize the amount of sh shaling um, surface separation on on the material itself at the critical mass uh, temperature all right um, so not that we're hurrying into anything because if you look on here uh, the postage here says 12 16 2022 so we're really cruising along really fast here aren't we um, Stan was, sent us out a kit <clears throat> and flow gauge, hose, fittings, and, uh, in here is the ceramic, ceramic tube that gets inserted in there and feeds the gas inside the, the top of the, uh, hot shot oven. All right. Just to show you a little bit of change here, uh, if you haven't seen it in the background, you know, we got our big oven here that we heat treated or we pre prepared or preheated the Babbitt pour. We'll also be using this to melt out investment castings. This is our uh, Hot Shot uh, 1200, and we've done some videos of heat treating sleeves and stuff like that in this already. This is the oven that we're going to prepare for the shielded gas. We went ahead and we picked up a bottle of nitrogen here, and... Uh, we're going to give nitrogen a try for shield and gas because it's about half the expense of argon. We needed another gauge because we're plumb out of gauges. And so we got that so that we break down because we know the kit that comes with this flow gauge cannot take full tank pressure. Finishing off the bench here, we've got two foundry or two uh, forges, uh, electric forges for melting materials as well. And then we have the hot shot dual oven over here and we'll have other purposes coming along for heat treating and preheating uh, or post heating items as well. All right, we've got to lay out and do some hole drilling in our oven so that we can insert the kit. So let's get started on that. We took the instructions and we laid out our dimension on the top of our oven for center to drill. And of course, we noticed in the drawings here that 
the instructions are made up for a more modern um, hot shot oven. And we modified our dimensions so that they were still center of this, but we studied the duplex oven, which is closer to the design of the instructions. We flipped this over, and of course, we're, we've got a pilot hole we got to put in there, a quarter inch, and then a three-eighths, and then there's supposed to be a five-eighths for the ceramic tube that inserts from the hose through the wall and feeds the gas inside the chamber. And down here, it gives you a kind of a view of it, okay? And then we know that the cutaway or the view of the ceramic is not gonna be the same in this oven. For one, if that's at that seat, the tube is gonna hang that far down in here. So we already know that we're gonna to have to modify how we're gonna add this in here because that gas tube just wants to stick slightly like that in here. Now, let me zoom you into the duplex behind here. Okay, and if we open up the door on the duplex, and of course, this would normally be coming in the top of the oven right at that location right there, and you can see that just about a half an inch three-eighths to a half an inch of that would be actually inserting into the oven. And you also see that the insulation is also in a separate little chamber and there's an air circulation around this. So we're going to make a mount that will stand up off the top of there, still have a little bit of air circulation around the upper part of the tube, but this will go through the insulation and this will stick down into our oven the way it would normally be sticking into, okay? So there again, that's how much actually sticks into the, your oven. We lucked out that the rubber pads for the oven actually sit on the table here of the drill press. And what a better way than making sure that we have a good 90 degree hole through the top of this um, oven. And I remember back in the day when they used to put a level bubble or center plumb bob bubble on your drills well they don't do that anymore you look at any of your um any of your battery operated ones don't even come with that feature all right so and somebody's going to call me out on that and say hey they're uh, such and such and such and such does have one but um none of mine do all right so i've located the center of our hole here and we're going to go in with a quarter inch so we can bring this up and Take out our centering piece. And we should. We're only going through two inches of material here. So that should be fine. Okay, we're going at warp speed. Okay, we're through the stainless. Now I'm gonna peek in here because I wanna see it come through here. I wanna see any pressures I'm putting on here. We're gonna clear it out. Okay, it's just starting to come through right now. Okay. Went through pretty well without breaking too much or, or you know, how when you go through wood and stuff like that. It actually looks pretty clean. All right. 
clean, clean hole. Very little debris down there in the bottom, which is good. Okay, we're gonna swap out our drill bits. As per the instructions, we're supposed to follow through with the three eights. All right, let's uh, lift this up, take the bit out. We're going to vacuum up this area here, and we're going to check the fit of our ceramic tube. We vacuumed it up. We haven't deburred the hole yet, but we it, it fits in there good. Oh, it's sticking down quite a bit. I don't know. Let's see if we can turn you in here. If you can see, yeah, you can see, you can see that sticking way down there. Okay. While you were getting your popcorn or whatever you were doing, <laughs> I created this little bonnet with some air clearance in here. And that's going to hold that exactly as designed by Stan and his crew there when they were coming up with this item. So this... It's actually going to be like that. Now, I created three holes here to pop rivet this thing right on top here. And then this thing will be able to set in there. And I can see in there. And the thing looks beautiful. Um, this is a reach. Of course, we're not reaching. We're only going through 100 thousandths worth of plate there. But I like how fine this tip is here. And I can give it a little circle. And then it's going to tell me. gonna tell me that I'm off on that one over there I know okay let's um, let's move this out of the way here and I'll line those two again <laughs> okay don't over speed that drill bit now We put our rivets down in here loosely and we confirmed our mark over there. And now we're going to center punch that one and we'll drill that one. And we should be ready to mount this. We put all three rivets in here and this is able to drop in and out of here. We're happy with our depth in there and we didn't destroy the oven. We did a pretty good job. Um, and I think our vented cap here is really going to let the heat dissipate before it gets up to the intake hose or the input hose I should say just the input side all right let's go ahead and we'll pop rivet those in and we'll get this thing moved into the other room I loosen these two top screws here on the fan because I believe that just goes right in there like that Okay. Awesome. Okay. We got, uh, we can put fittings in the back here. This fitting um, here will go over to um, the input and the supply will come from the bottom uh, because the direction of the ball has got to go in that direction. So the ball follows the flow. Stan, I want to give you a big uh, thank you. you. You made it really, really too simple. Um, you added in the kit a fitting so I can go right to a straight fitting that the tubing can go straight into. That'll be at the bottle end. And then I got two 90s here 
because this is against the wall, I think I'm gonna run two 90s because I want this loop just to be a loop like that. And then this 90 here will come off and come over there because this is gonna be backed up against the, not up against the window, but air clearance to the window there. Um, so that lead can come on over to the side and go directly to the bottle with no issue. Okay, and I like that they're uh, not only 90s here, but they actually freely swivel too. Cool. Okay, we're gonna set this off to the side. And we gotta go get a block of wood or a piece of uh, Keaton starboard or something to break our knife because we're gonna cut this flat on the end and we're gonna project our runs. All right, I got you zoomed in to the flow gauge over here and I got it cranked in right now. I'm gonna add a little bit uh, CFH. There's about 10, 12, okay? I can adjust this down to nothing. And now I have my variables here. Controlling the flow. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna shut down the tank. I'm pretty excited one that I'm, I'm set up here and I do have shielding gas. Now I chose the, um, the nitrogen after doing a little bit of investigation and also talking with my walling supplier for argon and, and uh, other shielding gases. And I did a little research in here. Nitrogen is used as a shielding gas in heat treating processes due to its advantages over traditional shielding gases like argon. Here are some of the key benefits. Now, I'm not gonna read through the whole thing, but I'm gonna give you highlights of what the uh, benefits are. Oxygen-free environment, it goes into that. Improved process control, increased efficiency, and cost effectiveness. In my description in this video, I list this whole entire page here so that you can uh, read the information. Uh, in heat treating application, nitrogen is used to purge and protect, maintain pressure, improve product quality. Overall, using nitrogen as a shielding gas in heat treating ovens is numerous benefits, including improved process control, increased efficiency, and cost savings. Hence me using the nitrogen, all right? Now I have the two shafts here. Actually, I have one new shaft and I have this old shaft here. And I'm contemplating on whether I'm gonna heat treat both of them at the same time or go ahead and do one at a time. And, uh, but this video here was showing how I'm gonna get ready. And the very next video, we are going to be heat treating our spline shads for Pearl, finally. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining Job Shop USA. Until next time, get her done.